Hey guys, welcome to the shop. So I got a brand new project here to start on, and we're gonna we're gonna dive right into this thing and see if we can get this get this done. So I gotta confess, I already started setting it up down there on the on the do-all mill there, and the reason why is because I wanted to try to speed up the process there uh, with the video and get a practice run and getting it set up, and then break it back down and then show you how I set the thing up because I wasn't quite sure, you know. But I started setting it up and I got it really, really close to where it needs to be. So I hate breaking it down. So what I wanna do is try to explain to you what we're gonna do and then I'll take the camera down there also and I will show you how I've got it set up there on the mill and I still have to do a little fine tweaking there. All right, so this is, this is the, uh, what, what we got here is a cylinder head off of a 1966 Triumph Bonneville Triumph TT Special, actually. I don't think it's a Bonneville. It was called a TT Special. And he told me that the TT Special back then, whenever they had those, was a race-only bike. He said, you come into the, the, the dealer, you bought it, you took it to the track, and you raced it. And that's why they're actually very rare now. And whenever you do find one, they're pretty expensive. So this belongs, the cylinder head goes to one that the bike shop is restoring. And it needs a little bit of a modification done to it, so they come to me and ask me if it's something I can handle. I believe this is a common modification whenever you upgrade to a newer style cylinder head, which is what that one is. I believe this is an original cylinder head from 1966, and you can upgrade it to a newer style cylinder head. So, on this head, you've got your, you got these tubes for your push rods, and they're gonna sit, they're going to sit in there like, like that, right? You know, except it'll be uh, flipped over the other way. This is upside down. And on the old style cylinder heads, or the older heads, the counter bores where these tubes go, they're bored deeper than the newer style head. So the modification you got to do is set it up and you need to go in there and you need to counter bore that hole a little bit deeper. I believe there's an O-ring that sits in there. And the way he was describing too is that whenever you go to try to put this engine together, if it's not bored correctly, then you've got a you got a gap issue there that you're dealing with. These need to go down just a little bit further on the new style heads. So that's what we got to do. They're at an angle. They're at a slight angle, so that's why I use the the uh, tilting angle plate down there and getting it, trying to get it all indicated in now. But I want to give you a tighter shot so that you can see what we're doing and then we'll move down to the mill, okay? All right, so the, the holes that we're talking about, this is one of them here and then that's the other one right there. And I believe this is an old style tube and then this is maybe a newer style. This one doesn't quite fit this one correctly. But it's sitting there like that and I believe there's an O-ring that sits down in here. And when this is all put together, you know, it's sealed there. So, I have got a measurement on this depth right here. And this is a tricky thing to measure. There's not a lot to work with right there. But I'm working off this flat right here. It's about in the same plane as this hole is bored. So what I did is I simply used my small square. And I set it there like that and pushed everything down nice and square and then transferred it to some calipers like this. And I'm getting about six millimeter or about a quarter inch, okay? So I'm actually calling it a quarter inch. You can call it six mil, somewhere in between. Uh, what else was I gonna explain? Oh, the, the whole size itself. All right, so I used some spring calipers here and got in there and that's how I used to measure this diameter. And I believe these were machined to about 30 millimeter. Yeah, it's about 30 millimeter. Now the new head that's down there, I checked it also, and it's bored to an inch and a quarter or about 32 millimeter. It's somewhere right at right there. But the inch and a quarter end mill, this is the one I believe I'm gonna use. The, on the other head, this inch and a quarter end mill will fit down in that counterbore perfectly. 
So we're just going to set up this end mill. This is a 7 8 shank. I do have a 7 8 collet for that mill, so we can use that. And the, the counter bore on the, the head that's down there, uh, I'm trying to think. I want to say it's only about an eighth inch deep, so we got to go approximately another eighth inch deeper. So that's the plan there. So let's go ahead and move down to the mill and we'll go ahead and finish getting that thing indicated and I'll share, you, share with you what I'm doing. So there it is set up on the adjustable angle plate like I like to call it. This thing will tilt, you know, 90 degrees. And I've got it set where I need to. So I was gonna look at this and I believe we were at three, yeah, three and a half degrees. So it's got a really nice uh, veneer scaler. I think this was a, uh, I can't remember now, tap, a tap pierce, let me see. Yes, this is a tap pierce uh, tool accessory. So it's a very well built tool, very tight. And this lines up really nice right here. So we got it on three and a half degrees. Makes me wonder, is that what the factory actually set it on, you know, and cut it there? So what I did, I got the indicator set up in there now, and I'll, I'll explain that in a sec. But to get it really, really close, what I had done, what I had done is I pushed this down inside the hole and I held it with my hand, like so, as square as I could. And then I just simply used my square butt here next to it and leveled it up. And I got it really, really close that way. And once I got it there, where I thought it needed to be, I went ahead and set up this test indicator to indicate the face of it. And that will allow me to rotate this a little bit more if I need to. And the funny thing is, is that I set it up, we zeroed it out, and so it's jumping around a little bit. It's not a perfectly flat surface, but you can get, get the idea we basically got a zero and when you come around here to the back right at zero there too same thing with the sides here so you know it's jumping around about a thou or so So I'm kind of reading that as a zero, zero front to back. So I think it's there. I went ahead and I went ahead and locked it down. And I think that is gonna work right there. I didn't know if going handheld, I, I, had the camera steady enough to really give you a good shot so we're just adding one more here to the video so you can see uh, how I've got the test indicator set up and it's just barely well clear to get in there but we're just touching the end of the needle and I'm just trying to indicate the tilt all right so we keep bouncing off that zero on the back side there and when I rotate it around to this side I'm bouncing off the zero there. It's like right there is a half thousandths. And you know, it's going between a half and one and back to zero. So I'm calling that good. All right, so my next plan of attack is to zero on the hole itself. I have not done that yet, so we're gonna go ahead and do that now. And the quill's all the way up, so I'm gonna have to lower this. And that's all the way down now, so. We're really, really close on our range of uh, movement here, so. Just getting her centered up. I think I'll be able to use the fine adjust now. I do have my uh, mirror <laughs> that I can try to use a little. Let's see. This is my Herb Blair mirror. We 
cover off. Okay. Got to move the table this way. Zero. Still got to go some more. All right, so we're on 15 and five. So let's go to 5,000. Sorry, that's on 10. Not far. Looks like that's within a thousandth right there. Looks like I'm getting maybe nine and ten. Nine there. Nine and a half. All right, let's check this way again. So about ten. Just a touch. Okay, 10, a little too far. It's not a perfectly round hole. So we got 11 there, 11 there. Okay, I think we're centered now. There's 10, and I think we got her. It looks pretty close. Table locked. All right, I think we got it now. And this is already tight. Uh, I think I forgot to mention that. So I've got a stud coming up through the other hole and a one strap clamp and you know, we've got this nice and tight right there. I've got two holes that's drilled and tapped in the top of this that I put in there myself for my 5.8 studs. So there's not going to be a whole lot of cutting pressure on this. I think this one clamp is going to be good enough for what we got to do here. Okay, we got a, on the front of the knee right here, I put it one of my uh, mag back indicators like this right here. We got it over here indicating zero where we got everything indicated in at, all right? The cutter is going to touch a little bit along this wall. It's going to try to shave that just a little bit. But what I want to do is go ahead and get that cut down to where we want to start. And then I want to scratch it again like I did once already. I want to scratch it to find a zero and then we'll feed it down six millimeter or 237 thousandths. See how she does. Too bad. Okay. Okay, so I got a zero. I'm gonna go ahead and move it back. Fifty thousandths. Okay, get it in neutral here. All right, there's where it's touching. I'm gonna go ahead and lock it. 
bring it back to our zero. Okay. It's just rubbing there where it's where it's on the back side. So that's our zero location for our depth. We're gonna start it right there. I'm I'm zeroing out the knee. Put it back in gear. All right, I'm gonna come up 237. Got everything locked. Fifty thou. Uh, now we're getting down to the bottom, so uh, they had it about eighty-one thousandths deep. That's a hundred. Hundred and fifty. Two hundred. Let me just check everything. Okay, everything's looking good. So we got another thirty seven to go. I hope that's a good shot for you there. Sounds like it's trying to chatter a little bit on me. Okay, there it is. There's our depth. Well, it looks like it's machined, huh? <laughs> I'll see if I can get in there and get a measurement to kind of verify it, but it should be should be about what we need. All right, so on the old head over there, what I did is uh, using the calipers here, I went from this edge down to the bottom. Just measuring from here to here using the uh, the depth part of the caliper, and I was getting one and five eighths, one point six two five on the calipers. So it looks like I'm very close. I'd say that's close enough. <laughs> it looks really good. Nah, I just bumped it there. Let me try it one more time. And it's hard to get a perfect measurement with calipers like that moving around, but I'm basically getting about the same thing measuring from this corner down to the bottom. So. It's just making me a little nervous. It just looks, it just looks deeper than the other one, but it's it's the same. All right, so all right, we got to do this again. So we'll loosen this up and flip it around, get her lined all back up, and do it one more time. Just checking it out, giving it a quick 
quick peek. All right, so we're going to line up on this side now. Just trying to get a little eyeball square here. And that's what I did the first time. And I think that, you know, once we put the indicator on there, we'll be able to see uh, how far out it is. But that should be good enough right there. I had to fiddle around and get the angle of that test indicator perfect in there so that it would spin and clear the, the body of the indicator on the, the wall there. Alright. Alright, I got a zero on the front side. Looks like a zero on the back side. Got a minus one there. And it looks like about a minus half. So I'm gonna I'm gonna call that centered right there. Go ahead and lock the table. Reset my zero here. All right, now I need to uh, reset this test indicator, and now we'll go ahead and check that face, the, the, the actual face where we're going to cut it, and make sure our, our tilt is, is correct. It should be there, I hope. I'll bring it right here so you can see it. What I want to do is come up to the, the needle. All right. like about one thousandths there, one thousandths, zero, and let's see what we're bouncing on the back there. I think it's going to be where we need it. So what's that, uh, you know, it's about a thousandths. I can't remember if it's plus or minus. That's a plus, plus one. Plus one, plus one, so it's good. It's there, guys. There it's going between zero and one. So, I'm gonna cut it right there. We're gonna repeat what we did on the first hole because everything worked out good. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and we'll get it down there, down there close, and then we'll uh, set our, our depth. Same thing, it's just cleaning up that radius there. really hard to see back there. Probably would have been better if it was on the front side where you could see it. Alright, so that was down there in the bottom. All the way in the bottom. So we'll do the same thing. I'm gonna move the knee or the the uh, y axis towards me 50 thousandths on the dial here. Alright. 
I believe I'm touching it. Going back to the zero. Set our knee at zero. Alright, here we go. Let's go ahead and make this cut. Come on. Drop down in there. Add yeah, that one deeper. That's 140 deep there. see if I can leave it right where it's at that way if I need to I can go back in there and recut it all right all right I did some measurements on it and this one's throwing me off a little bit right here I'm not quite sure what the difference is but I'm thinking the casting is a little different than the uh, the old cylinder head. I think what's different is possibly from here to here. It's it's a slightly different. And the reason why I say that is because when I get my reference measurement, like I did on the other side, I just kind of line it up here, and I'm getting like one inch five seventy five. So it's fifty thousandths deeper. I'm not. I'm sorry, not deeper. Um, it's 50 thousandths higher on this side than it is down there when you measure off of this reference point here. But if I measure the depth here, you know, we're getting our six millimeter measurement like I wanted. So what I'm afraid of, what I'm afraid of doing is going in there and cutting that another 50 thousandths and it being too deep. So I would rather just leave it like it is because I, I think this will work. I don't know 100%, but I think it will work. So I'm going to go ahead and just leave it like it is and give this back to the mechanic, you know, and then tell him what's up with that. And then if I need to, then I'll set it back up here and go a little bit deeper. But this depth is, is uh, indicating that it's, that it's right. So maybe this will work. I really, I really hope it will. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and and unbolt it and get it out of here, really. We got the uh, angle plate and everything, it'll be set. So if I do have to go back in here and adjust the depths or something, you know, I've already got a reference now to work off of. We got this that's already set. take it back over to the bench so I'm doing some verifying to uh, try to find out if my measurements off and at this point I think that the one side is uh, is shallower but I don't know I really don't know what I want to do is leave this thing alone and take it down there I'm going to talk to the mechanic I'm going to tell him what what I'm finding and I'm going to have him tell me and I'll, I'll take my calipers with me and we'll measure it and I'll show him what I'm talking about here uh, because you know touching off of the casted surface I've gone the proper depth but when you measure from up here it's not the same so what I've done is this you know the tube here that goes what I'm doing is I'm sticking those down there and I know this isn't a very accurate reading but it's given me a nice reference to work off of so just kind of hold that in there square and I'm lining up with the calipers here a little bit 
get a little bit of length there. And what I'm getting is basically it's about a 50 thousandths difference. Okay, so 3 inch 413, let me just go ahead and hit that calculator here, 3.413. Alright, then we go to this side, over here. Right there, that's telling me 60 thousandths. And you'll get a little different measurement every time you do this. I was averaging about 50 thousandths. There you go. That's what I kept getting was around 360. So that was leaving me about 50 thousandths difference there, which is the difference that we're measuring from the top. So again, I'm gonna we're just gonna leave it alone for now. And if I need to, I'll set it right back up and go in there and recut that one and we'll make the uh, measurements the same from the top right here, but I'm gonna leave it up to the uh, mechanic to make that decision because I definitely don't want to cut it too deep. <laughs> so if I have to uh, revisit this, I'll, I'll sure be sure to let you know and uh, find out my find out what we needed to know, okay? So we're gonna sign off from here and I'll see you on the next job, okay?